Welcome back to the deep dive. You know, we all want to study smarter, not just, well, not just longer, right? That feeling. Today, we're digging into exactly that. We're looking at some, uh, some great insights from ASAP Science on YouTube, their video, The Nine Best Scientific Study Tips, I... and our goal. It's pretty yeah. simple. Find the tips that actually work based on science so you can, you know, maybe ditch some old habits and really learn efficiently. Yeah, it's really important because a lot of what we think works when we study, it's kind of, well, it often flies right in the face of how our brands actually learn things. So we'll unpack some uh, surprising research-backed ways to really optimize learning and, crucially, remembering it long-term. Right, not just for the test next week, more like yeah. deep understanding. Exactly. Okay, so let's jump in. The big one first, mm -hmm. cramming. We've all done it, right? The all-nighter before a big exam. Yeah, feels try. productive. Mm -hmm. But ASAP Science says this is actually linked to the lowest grades. That seems wrong somehow. Uh -huh. Why is cramming so bad? <laughs> Well, it's all about how your brain uh, encodes information. It's not like a hard drive. You can't just dump data in last minute. Think of it more like building muscle. You need short, consistent workouts, like 20, 30 minute sessions spaced out over time, days, weeks even. Spaced repetition. Exactly. That's how information actually sticks, builds real connections. And get this, those marathon cram sessions they can actually hurt your reasoning and memory for up to four days later. Four days? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So having a routine specific study times, it actually primes your brain, tells it, okay, time to learn efficiently. Okay. So cramming is out. What about just, you know, rereading notes, highlighting? Surely that helps. Uh, well, this is where we hit the active versus passive learning thing mm -hmm. and those methods, rereading, highlighting. They're mostly passive, largely ineffective, actually. Really? But it feels like I'm doing something useful. I know, but it doesn't really deepen understanding or help you link concepts. Sometimes you just end up highlighting unimportant stuff. So if passive doesn't work, what does? Active methods. Right. Think flashcards. They're great because they force active recall. You have to pull the information out. You can use them anytime, anywhere, basically, on the bus, waiting in line. Okay. Active recall. That makes sense. Yeah. And that leads into another point they made, right? The teach effect. Oh, yeah. That's a powerful one. First... Have a specific goal for your study session. Like, I will learn to conjugate these verbs. But then, the real magic. Prepare to teach the material to someone else. Why does that work so well? Because it forces your brain to organize everything logically, coherently. You have to really understand it to explain it simply. The study showed people expecting to teach did much better. If you can't explain it, you don't know it. Got it. Precisely. And related to that act of recall, practice tests. They're not just for checking what you know, they force retrieval. Ah, uh, and mistakes show you the gaps. Exactly, so you know exactly what to focus on. Plus, it builds confidence, which actually helps performance. Okay, this is all really practical. What about the study environment itself? Does that matter? It does. Yeah. Having a specific study spot, kind of like having specific time, signals to your brain it's time to focus. Makes sense, and background music. Good or bad, I always wonder about that. Yeah, that's interesting. Some classical might be okay for some people, but Recent studies actually show rhythmic background noise can hurt focus. People often do better in silence. Hmm. Okay. And the elephant in the room. Yeah. The phone. Put it yeah. away. Seriously. It just <laughs> destroys concentration. Yeah. Even having it nearby, face down, can reduce your cognitive capacity. Right. Brain kryptonite. Okay. So stepping back, the big picture here is it's not about brute force studying harder. It's about understanding how your brain actually works best and using that, working with it. These are tools for, like, Lifelong learning, really. Critical thinking. It really changes how you think about studying, yeah. doesn't it? So much of the common wisdom seems yeah. off. Okay, so for everyone listening, reflecting on all this, yeah. which one of these science-backed tips will you try first? Which one will you bring into your routine starting today to unlock your brain's potential?